Corporate finance practice problem using one note. Net present value NPV with negative future outflows. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon left-hand side, practice problems down in the 1224 net present value NPV with negative future outflows tab. Also note when using OneNote, look at the immersive reader, our presentations up top, mirrored down here in the text area, same name, same number with transcripts transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them closing the icon out we have our information up top going through the calculations on down below we're looking at the net present value similar kind of scenarios here where we have the initial investment going down money going out and we expect to get a return on that in the future, years into the future. Therefore, we want to take into consideration time value of money. The net present value, the NPV, is one of the primary tools for us to do so. One of the different things we have here this time is that one of the future cash flows are negative. So we have a $48,000 negative amount in the cash flow. So possibly at some point in the future we're going to think maybe we have to revamp or something like that or put a new engine in the equipment at some point stop operations for whatever reason we think there's going to be a negative cash flow in the future so when we present value this is that going to mess us up is that going to mess up our process to to think about the present value of this cash flow it shouldn't should be pretty straightforward shouldn't be a problem so now we have uneven payments and this negative number involved so we have the initial investment. This could be any kind of project where we have the initial investment. We expect future cash flows. We're trying to predict what's going to happen in the future. We're putting 200000 down. It might be for equipment, might be for an investment, might be for a project, some type of thing. And it might be inventory that we're purchasing. And we have the cost of capital, 14%. Remember, that does not represent simply interest or anything. It represents our basically opportunity cost included in there as well. That's what we need the expected return to be in order to accept the project that means that if the net present value comes out to zero or above one or above then we might accept the project because it has cleared the rate of the 14 percent you might hear that 14 percent called the hurdle rate the required rate of return the cost of capital the discount rate that we're going to be using and and so keep that in mind we then have our cash flows we're expecting in the future Year one, year out, 47, two years out, 62, three years out, 56, four years out. We're going to have to pay at that point 48, possibly to revamp the operations, new engine in the machine, something like that. Then in year five, we have 160,000 and year six, the 40,000. So we're going to do our net present value calculations. The first thing we want to do is line up our calculations in a proper table. I would be lining them up by naming the years on the left hand side starting with period zero that being the period that we put the down payment in and then we're just simply going to line up our future payments next to the year represented with just a number on the year so that we could use them with a formula if we were to do this in excel there's our negative number in year four the forty-eight thousand, and here we continue on if we were to add up this cash flow negative numbers minus the positive numbers we would have 117,000 net basically profit at the end of the day after the end of six years. But of course, six years is a long time. So we want to be able to present value that 117 and see if we get a return that would clear the rate of cost of capital, the 14%. To do that, we're going to present value each one of these periods. Now, I'm not going to go through the present value calculation uh, one by one, but I will look at it in Excel. We won't do it with a mathematical calculation. Obviously, it would be quite tedious to do this with a mathematical calculation because we cannot use an annuity. We'd have to use present value of one for each of these calculations. So you can kind of understand it conceptually. It's easy to do that calculation in Excel, which will show the formula here. If you want to do it in Excel, we have the calculation in Excel as well. So the first one's going to be the, the 200,000. So if we present value that, it would look like this. The reason I'm going to show the formula for the first one, even though it's at time period zero, is because in Excel, you can then copy it down. And it's nice to have this whole column uniform. So we have the present value, negative present value uh, brackets. The rate then is going to be this 
8%, the 14% over here. Notice I made that an absolute reference here by putting a dollar sign before the, the B and 5. You only need a mixed reference, but the idea being if something's outside our data set, we want to make sure to make it an absolute reference so that when I copy it down, it will then pull down properly. We'll talk more about that in Excel, but just be aware of that. Then we have the comma, number of periods. Notice I'm picking up the zero over here on the period. That's why it's nice to have that in its own cell on this side. You could hard code that in, but again, to copy the cells down, it would be a problem because then it would hard code the zero and I want it to move to one next time with the next year. Comma, comma, because we don't have a payment because it's not an annuity future value then being the 200,000 result still 200,000 given we're at time period zero. The next one, however, we have a difference 47,000 one year out this time. We have the formula present value, the rate B5, it's absolute reference with a dollar sign before B and 5 of the rate of the 14% cost of capital, the discount rate, the hurdle rate, whatever you want to call it, comma, number of periods is now one period, one period out, comma, comma, future value is the 47,000. So that, of course, is lower because we're bringing it back for the 41,228. We're going to continue doing on, that on down. I won't go through the the uh, formula each time here but the 62,000 we bring that back 47,707 the 57 56,000 if we bring it back 14 percent is the 37,798 and then the 48,000 even though it's an outflow we got to make sure that we have our signs going the right way but if done so same process it's just a negative number we're going to present value it because even though it's an outflow we're still going to present value it based at our our current rate that's going to bring it to the 20, 28, 420, and then we would continue on the 160 present valued five years out would be the 83,099. Six years out for the 40,018,223. Then if we were to add these up, we get to a negative 364. So note, remember that this negative 364 doesn't really mean we're losing uh, money per se, because if it was zero or above, it would mean that we cleared our percent of the 14% cost of capital, which includes the profit that we want. So if it was even $1, then we would have cleared the cost of capital because this 14% does not represent simply inflation. It represents the, what we want to be getting in a return. So if this thing was anything but positive, anything positive, then we would, we would think it cleared it and we might possibly take on the project. Because it's negative, that means we're not clearing the hurdle rate of the 14% it was, right? 14%. So we may not accept it. Note, it's pretty close though, the 364. So that could be in our, our range of error. We, we could then go further on to that if we wanted to and take a look at what the actual return was by using the internal rate of return and further analyze it uh, in that way. But bottom line at this point is the negative cash flow in the future or uneven cash flows doesn't really causes any problems as long as we properly format the net present value calculation and if you do that in excel which you pretty much is really the best way to do it you know once you get to to multiple payments out into the future and uh, you have different different payments whether they be negative or not it's quite useful to use excel it'd be a lot longer and tedious to do that kind of calculation uh, by hand so once done there pretty straightforward to, to do the same types of setup, same types of calculation. We do do this problem in Excel if you want to take a look at it, and I highly recommend that we do.